Hello friends, good day to you. It is a cold morning in Colorado as I record this message for you today. So cold that our leaders at Prince of Peace decided out of safety to encourage people to stay home this morning and avoid the sub-zero temperatures to stay safe and warm. So we postponed uh, this service, we canceled today. Uh, we will look forward to it heating up during this week and seeing you all again in church on Sunday next week. The reading today on this second Sunday after the Epiphany comes from John's Gospel. It continues readings throughout this season of Epiphany that reveal Jesus to people. It starts with the Epiphany uh, where the, the wise men from far away followed a star that led them to find Jesus. This story and others show Jesus revealed to people who want to know who Jesus is. This is a story from John's first chapter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to Philip, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved children of God, May the Lord who comes to us in Jesus fill you with grace, peace, and life today and in the days to come to all eternity. That is what Jesus does for God's beloved children. Amen. I think the call stories in the Gospels are amazing stories. In some of the Gospels, Jesus simply invited people to come. Follow me, he said and people dropped what they were doing to follow him. I find that amazing. Other times, Jesus met their most critical need. He healed their bodies and their souls, and they followed him. Some people heard Christ's teaching, and they were called by the Spirit to go along with him. In our reading today, the call to Jesus came not from his own voice, but person to person. Scholarship tells us that John's Gospel was written after the other three Gospels in our New Testament. It was written to help people believe in Jesus after the eyewitness accounts of Jesus passed on with the people who witnessed it for themselves. So it was very significant that Christ's call could reach others person to person. It was not necessary to meet Christ in the body in order to believe. For faith, it was enough to encounter Jesus in story, in the words and deeds of others, and in the life that we share together. Christ's life is timeless, Christ's work is eternal, and Christ's call to believers is ongoing. Christ is alive. Resurrection is real. Christ is living and ever-present, even present, in other Christians who share the call to believe and to live. 
The encounter that we just read of Philip and Nathaniel is in the first chapter of John's Gospel, and a pattern is established in John's first chapter that is very significant. John set a pattern of three days. When the gospel set things in three days, I think we should pay attention. Remember what can happen in three days. Remember what happens in three days as you read the conclusion of John's gospel with Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Today's reading is the third next day passage in John's chapter. Each of the preceding paragraphs begin the next day, the next day, and then our paragraph that we read today is the third next day passage in this chapter. During this whole chapter, Jesus is revealed to others using this pattern. At the end of the gospel, Jesus will also be revealed in a three-day pattern. <laughs> a three-day pattern that means salvation for God's people. This sequence of texts is significant. Following the prologue at the very beginning of John, the prologue that reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that word became flesh and dwelled with us. Readers begin to find out from those first sentences who Jesus is. Just prior to our passage, the story of Philip and Nathaniel, Jesus was confessed as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and as the Son of God. Nathaniel called him rabbi in today's reading. These help us know who Jesus is. After John the Baptist proclaims, Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus spoke a question. What are you looking for? I think John wanted his readers to ask that question along with the characters in the story. What are you looking for? What do you hope to see? What do you hope will be revealed? That question is answered throughout the gospel as Jesus is revealed as the one whom people are looking for. Jesus' invitation and promise follows Come, and you will see. Christ is revealed in the story, through works and through faith. What are you looking for? Come and see. Come and see Jesus. But will Jesus look like how we expect? Will he be who we anticipate? Will Jesus surprise us? What if someone told you he came from Nazareth? <laughs> For Nathaniel, that was hard to swallow. Can anything good come from Nazareth? He asked. We don't know Nazareth, but we know the disbelief behind that question. I don't know what I see from Nazareth, but I know what I see from others, and I know what I want from others, what I'm looking for from others. I'm looking for love, for kindness, for acceptance, for forgiveness, for wholeness, sometimes for rest, sometimes for courage. I'm looking for assurance. What are you looking for? What do you hope to see? At my most basic feelings and fears, I want somebody to tell me, Todd, it's going to be okay. Even if it's not going to be okay, I really want someone to tell me that it's going to be okay. I want to believe it. Come and see, Philip said. Come and see. See the one from Nazareth 
who will know you. See the one from Nazareth who will love you. The one from Nazareth who will set your worried mind at peace. See the one from Nazareth who will accept you and forgive you. See the one from Nazareth who will make you whole, who will give you rest, who will bring you courage that you never knew you had, and who will assure your troubled soul. See the one from Nazareth who will tell you that it's all going to be okay. Somehow, it's all going to be okay. Love will find a way to make it okay. Maybe even if it takes three days. It will be okay. Whatever you seek, come and see Jesus. First the invitation. First the invitation that you hear that you received and that you give to others. Come, check this out. Share in what brings me life. Share in the sacrament. Share this community. Share what brings me life. Come and ask for what you seek. Come and see. After the invitation comes the revelation. See Jesus. In word, see him in sacred story, see him in the sacrament, see Jesus in the community that you have with other believers, and see Jesus in the faces of your neighbors. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? What a question. Let's make it more personal and more relatable. Can anything good come out of Prince of Peace Lutheran? Small, aging, some would say dying church. Can anything good come from Prince of Peace? First, the invitation. Then you will see Jesus in the word, in the sacred story, in the sacrament, in the community and the faces of your neighbors. Anything good come of this? You bet. You will see Jesus in these things that we do. Maybe in the word, in the sacrament. Maybe it's in the music or the coffee and refreshments. Maybe it's in the friendships as we visit around church. Or maybe in the preaching, the smell of candles or when you enter the sanctuary and smell those old hymnals, the paper, the smells of church. Take a moment and ask yourself, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? After you've answered that question, or at least asked that question of yourself, then go. Go and invite, because Jesus offers what the world needs most. Jesus offers things that we need most. The things that we can't find anywhere else. Where in the world can we go to find life? And not just any life, but life that is eternal. Life that overcomes the death of our bodies. Life that gives us hope beyond what we see and touch and smell and know in our mortal bodies. Only in Jesus do we find that life. So come and see. Where in the world can we go to find hope? And not just any hope but hope that is eternal, hope that overcomes the gloom, the despair around us in these mortal bodies. Only in Jesus will we find that hope. So come and see. Where in the world can we go to find forgiveness of sin? And not just any forgiveness, but the kind that frees us 
from anything our past holds before us and raises us to new life without regret or shame. Only in Jesus can we find that kind of forgiveness. So come and see. The world can offer us much. Riches, acclaim, competition, fun sometimes, survival and reputation. The world can offer us cars and homes and books and music and fashion. The world can offer us credit cards and shiny jewelry. It can offer us moments of wonderful pleasure that are all fleeting at best. Nothing that the world offers, however, will be truly satisfying. Nothing the world offers will satisfy your deepest need. You're invited to come and see something different, to come and meet someone more, to receive what will truly satisfy. Come and see, and then go and live. In Jesus' name, amen.